Hi everyone. How are you today? I hope you are always healthy. Welcome back to my channel. Like always, today I'm going to discuss some topic that will make you wonder about the advanced technology of the past. I got this on Larry's Telegram channel called Tartaria and History Channel. Please check the description to know more about his channel. I know that my video quality is far from good, but I hope the content is understandable. Some might say that I'm being repetitive by discussing this. But that's the whole point. This is proof that a small occult elite of the history to fit their narrative. Anyway, I also have a Telegram channel. There, I will share various information that I cannot share here. Don't forget to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel, the link is also in the description box below. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. This is the municipal building right in front of the VT station in Bombay, or Mumbai. Its beauty and awesomeness is unparalleled. The use of soothing colors felt balmy and soothing to me. It was awesome to simply stand in its presence, like a colossus. You have to crane your neck to see the top. Was it made by giants? Over the portico in front, there are two identical statues of an animal. Doesn't it look like Griffin, the lion-like animal with wings depicted on the flag of Tartary? What do you think? Next to this building and probably a part of it, but hidden from front, is what is called the Annex Building, which has eight floors, and one can count more than 200 ornate arched windows. Do you need such huge buildings for Goft offices? That too, in 1880. No way. As is being pointed out by some, do those numerous arched openings have something to do with harnessing free energy? What do you think? Before I continue the video, please give a like if you'd learned something. And, don't forget to subscribe, and also, click the notification bell too, so you won't miss any update. And, watch to the end, to avoid misunderstanding. Thank you. In northern Spain, in the municipality of the Lower Navarres, there is the Cave of Harpy, a rocky shelter located in Estaranquibi, a few meters from the Franco-Spanish border. More than a cave, it is an anticline, that is a convex fold whose center is occupied by the most ancient geological layers. To me, it looks like a fallen tree. You are looking at tree rings, somewhat collapsed, so not perfectly round. What do you think? Found in the desert to the south of Lima, Peru, near the Nazca Lines, this skull has an unusual shape and looks like his brain would be large in volume. You can visually see that the right and left frontal parts are bulging out and expanded. Judging by the size, the skull belonged to an individual at least 10 feet in height. So many different beings hidden to our past, and yet some people still squabble over skin color. If only they searched outside of the mainstream narrative. What do you think? Skulls of Peru A small cave holds a stash of skulls and bones found outside a small village. The location is being kept secret as to not alert government officials or any others with bad intentions near the find. Their cranial capacity is at least 25% greater than the average human skull and they are missing the sigital suture which is found in all human skulls. There are other anomalies with the skulls, though they do have similarities to the Paracas skulls. Cranial deformation had not occurred with the Paracas skulls or these for that matter. There was a time where all types of humanoids existed. Our past seems to be far more interesting than most people know. What do you think? This monument is called Flora Fountain. It is in Mumbai, earlier called Bombay, India. The sculptures are mesmerizing. See the windswept dress of the lady on top. The beauty grace femininity of the four ladies at the bottom are breathtaking in detail and so lifelike. 
they appear real and alive. This area of Bombay is chock full of Tartarian buildings. Who would have thought? And to think this entire period of history has been completely erased from the books is simply astounding. All the major cities of India are full of these indescribably grand architecture, all housing government offices now. How crazy is that no historian has bothered to look at them from this angle? Is it simply ignorance? Or are human beings trained to see only what they are told to see? Let's talk about water living water. The natural slope of the land allowed aqueducts in Rome to channel water from a freshwater source, such as a lake or spring, to a city. The great benefit of spring water is that it comes up from the earth structured, which means the molecules are arranged in cohesive magnetized hexagonal form. This is also how water is said to contain memory. Within each of water's cells, there are 440,000 information panels. And as physicist Rustam Roy said, it may be the single most malleable computer. Tap water in our cities today contain contaminants that are detrimental to human health such as chlorine and fluoride. Tap water in certain cities is recycled waste water. Filters can be good at removing most of these compounds, but that creates a water with no healthy minerals and doesn't address structure. Often, we grow up being taught that water straight from the earth is dangerous, yet all water comes from nature. Our ancestors gathered and drank unprocessed spring water from nature. Good spring water comes from aquifers deep underground. The power of spring water is that it goes through the earth's natural filtration system. Sometimes, this means moving up through hundreds of thousands of feet of filtration material. It's hard to believe that a few feet in a water machine could be better than that. Spring water is also abundant in healthy minerals, such as silica, magnesium and calcium, and contains healthy microbes and probiotics. The water we drink begins entering our bloodstream in about 5 minutes. At the molecular level, we are over 99% water. This liquid can either be the foundation of our health or sickness, depending on the quality. There is much debate about the best kind of water to drink. Collecting fresh pristine spring water is the perfect option for our health and the health of the earth. Changing the water you drink changes the waters you are made of and greatly improves health. Once you drink pristine living spring water, it's hard to drink anything else. Many pristine spring water sources are available to you around the world. The community website offers a world map to find a spring near you. Findaspring.com slash map. Here, you can also read about the quality of the springs. Do you have a favorite spring? What do you think about this video? Please like and share this video if you like it, so that more people are aware of what is happening in this world. Before I end this video, let's say thank you to everyone who took the time and energy to research this, they have done a lot for us all. Please subscribe to watch the next upcoming videos. Thank you for watching the video until the end, I hope this information is useful for all of us. See you in the next video.